I've understood that there was a hotel where you couldn't get a room at in Frankfurt. Oh, yes. When Can I you first, tell us about that? Yes. What time period happened? Well, that was when I first, was first elected. And when I went there to uh, select a seat in the Senate and things like that, I went to two or three hotels. And they had no vacancies. Right. So I had to stay with the they have no vacancies in general, no vacancies for you. They didn't have any vacancy for me. But uh, I had met the Lieutenant Governor's uh, Secretary, Marlene Tenton Samuels. Samuels were a very prominent family in Frankfurt. They were caterers. They catered a lot of stuff for governors and others. But anyway, Marlene Tentman had a little three-room house and a bath. Um, 221, what street was that? It was just a shotgun house. And I was getting ready to drive back to Louisville since I couldn't get a room. And I saw her coming down the Capitol steps. And I had met her at a reception. And uh, so I pulled over to holler at her. And I told her I was getting ready to drive back to Louisville because I couldn't get a room. And so she said, well, you can stay with me. I said, okay. <laughs> That's all I needed. So you're a senator of Kentucky and you can't get a room to Can't to get a room. Somewhere. And uh, so anyway, it was a blessing to stay with her because she was an executive secretary for the lieutenant governor. And by her being in that office, she informed me everything was going on out of the lieutenant governor's office. See? Of course, I kept quiet about it. I knew what was going on. But uh, she gave me her bedroom, and she slept on the couch. But the blessing was all the bills that I introduced, uh, and whatever, I, if I was going to speak on the bill, which I always spoke on my own bills, uh, I would dictate to her what I was going to say about the bill. And she would, when I, after I'd go to bed, she'd type that stuff up. She'd type 100 words a minute. You know, she, and uh, so she would type it up. And then what she would do, she would leave the Capitol and, um, and come home and she cook a big meal every day. She was from Harlan, Kentucky, and she knew how to cook. And she made, every day she had cornbread and uh, cobbler and stuff like that. And then Ralph, and, now, see, I took Ral with me when I went to Frankfurt. Mm -hmm. uh, Julian Carroll, who was Speaker of the House, gave him a job as reed clerk in the House of Representatives. He was the first African American ever to even be a reading clerk in, in the House. And then uh, a fellow, uh, another fellow who worked with me, who lived next door to me where I lived, I took him there too and got him a little job. What's his name? Uh, I, don't know. Okay. I kind of forgot mm -hmm. his name. But anyway, the two of them, so Marlene would uh, prepare dinner for the three of us every day. And uh, so she and I became great friends. And she finally married a Samuels and uh, moved to Cleveland. And she was a teacher. And um, originally she was from Harlan, Kentucky. She's from the same place that Aubrey Williams, the attorney, is from. Mm -hmm. uh, they call it Coxon. Coxon. It's a little black area in Holland, around Holland somewhere. But she and I are still great friends, and she has just retired from the school system in Cleveland.